And welcome to Daily Devotion here at Good Shepherd Lutheran Church in Lincoln, Nebraska. I'm Vicar Jacob Garrison. Our reading for today comes from the Gospel according to St. Luke, the second chapter, verse 21. And this is the Gospel reading for the Feast of the Circumcision in the name of Jesus. And at the end of eight days, when he was circumcised, he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. As far as I know, this is the shortest gospel reading we have for any day in the entire church year. It's just one verse. And while it's just one verse, there's a lot going on here. First of all, we've got circumcision. And this makes sense. It makes sense that Jesus, our Lord, is circumcised. Yes, he's God, so he's beyond everything, yet at the same time, he is also man. He is an heir of the flesh of David. Therefore, he subjects himself to the same things that all the other Israelites did, like circumcision. And he does this because part of Jesus' job down here on earth is to fulfill the entirety of God's law. So, here, he's being circumcised as commanded by himself in the Old Testament. And then there's the next part where we get his name. Jesus, which if you read Matthew's gospel, you learn exactly what Jesus' name means. It means the Lord saves. And Matthew says he will save his people from their sins. And so the circumcision and naming of Jesus cannot be separated. That's why we put them together in the church. Because Jesus saving his people from their sins, as he had promised from of old, was always going to have to come by bloodshed. Bloodshed that we see right here, only eight days in, in little baby Jesus' life, before he can even talk, before he can walk, before he can do anything. His blood is being shed for you. It's being shed here, we see it, both passively for you, passive obedience, where he sheds his blood, also active obedience, where he's fulfilling the law. He's doing both halves of the equation, both what we need fulfilled and also suffering in our place for what we did not get fulfilled. He's doing both. And just like here, we see Jesus helpless and shedding his blood, so we see him at the end as well, when he finally sheds his blood on the cross for the forgiveness of your sins, thereby saving you. That is the Lord's strength. That is Jesus' strength, here as a baby and also as a helpless, limp body on the cross. His strength comes from being subject to the law and subject to death, subject to to Satan subject to our sin. And by being subject unto it, he then rises victorious. And thanks be to God for that. For now, the law, both the law of circumcision, but the rest of the law as well, no longer bears down on us. We don't have to be circumcised anymore. We are free in regards to circumcision because our Lord fulfilled all that was needful in circumcision. Circumcision was a sort of training wheels for the Old Testament Jews, the Old Testament Christians, in order to get them to the point where Jesus could come and shed his blood. He's come, we've seen it in full, and now, in a sense, we are a bit more mature Though our faith is not, but the way God treats us is than those in the Old Testament. For we can eat whatever we want now. We can be circumcised or not now. We can observe certain feast days or not. We're free. He doesn't hold it against us. 
The training wheels are off. And now we live in great freedom as children of God. Circumcision has been replaced as a thing you do to infants to welcome them into God's family by baptism. Not something we do, not something we lose, but something that God himself gives to us. The, the very thing that Jesus is doing right here, saving us shedding his blood for us, is given to us in our baptism. And our hearts, therefore, are circumcised, not our flesh, both men and women, circumcised. That's what the epistle reading means as well. Not that there's not male and female, as it says in Galatians 3.28, but instead that before God there is no longer male or female. We are all circumcised in our hearts. Which, if you read the Psalms of the Old Testament, it shows up several times in different Psalms that God didn't really care a lot about circumcision. He cared mostly about circumcision of the heart. And so today, we give thanks for little baby Jesus starting out the way he ends, fulfilling the law and shedding his blood in our stead so that we would not be condemned by the law but instead live as children of God. Today, let me say a, bit, a little prayer for you. Now, you can just listen along while I read this and pray it yourself if you'd like. This is a prayer written by Wilhelm Lea, one of the people that helped found the LCMS way back in the day from one of his little prayer companion books. Let me read this for you. This is for the day of circumcision of our Lord. Gentle Lord Jesus Christ, who wast circumcised on the eighth day, shedding the first drops of thy blood for our sins to redeem us from the grievous burden and awful curse of the law, we call upon thee with our whole hearts to circumcise our hearts, taking away the veil of our unbelief and choking out all sinful lusts and desires of the flesh that we may become new creatures, comforted in every time of need by thy most holy name, and as children of the new covenant, love one another until we shall all be finally gathered unto thee, our Savior. Amen. In the name of Jesus, the one who saves. Amen.